And welcome back, esports fans, to the PCS Summer. This is week four, day three, the last day of this week before we get into the final regular season of the split. I am, of course, still Pirate Titans. He is still Nice Star. And our wonderful sponsors, you can see at the bottom of your screen, they are CTBC Bank, China Airlines, and Chungwa Telecom. Now, Nice Star, this next matchup is one that I think is a little closer than it looks on paper. J Team taking on the Berjaya Dragons. It also looks a lot more closer in the standings than, <laughs> than it also actually it's is. It's fifth and six. Yeah, it's technically fifth and sixth seed, but there's still quite a gulf when it comes to the actual match record. We're going to see Taipei J Team's roster here. Rest, Hana, Mission, Lovi, and Woody. No changes into the roster there. And I mean, when they mm -hmm. played in week number two, the interesting thing was that... Berjaya, that was the debut of Arashi and Enzo. We'll see if uh, second time around changes a whole lot because, I mean, Enzo, he, he looked really bad in that first time, the first go around coming in at On support, support so, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's evolved a lot more since. Yeah, this is definitely a Berjaya that have looked better, and I think J Team have. Also, well, honestly, I kind of think they've sort of been very much in a similar spot they were during the split. Now, they are locked in for playoffs, but their opponents mm -hmm. are not just yet. Prajaya going to look to put some distance between them and the rest of the back. They are Ozzy in the top side, Arashi in the jungle, Minji on mid, and then K2 and Enzo rounding it out. As you mentioned, Nightstar, this team uh, debuted their finalized roster against J-Team the last time these two teams met a bit ago. And uh, all smiles on the faces of this squad. I say it every week, but I think it always bears repeating. Arashi has <laughs> easily the best headphone game in the league. Yeah, for sure. He's got the best headphones and uh, also the best smile. Look at that. He's just absolutely beaming. But our matchup... He's happy. Yeah, our matchup's going to be top lane. And last time around, Ozzy really had rest number in the lane phase he was playing the gwen into the gnar rest one of the few players in this league that's still to sticking to the gnar i don't really think gnar is a very good champion at the moment but he's making it work and it's just really been more of j team playing to their very slow methodical play style of just trying to get to those first couple team fights with all your items and for the mm -hmm. side of Berjaya, it's all about just generating as much chaos not quite to the degree of alpha's um level but still trying to play a little bit more skirmishy oh yeah and i think honestly these two players are so emblematic of their team styles and yes you you're seeing that right there's a mordekaiser in the mix for ozzy <laughs> because he plays that champion after flashing it a while finally brings it out and you know, there is a difference in how these two lane. You can see the biggest discrepancy in the gold difference of 15. Ozzy's not typically a big lane winner. I think you can also credit that to the fact that Berjaya Dragons just haven't won as many games. <laughs> but surely, while well, Rest likes to play a little more slow and steady, uh, build up leads for himself, and then start to take over, Ozzy, just like his squad, loves to go a little bit ham. Uh, let's take a look as we get into the Vixen bands. Gwen banned, Renekton banned. It's going to also be a Lucian ban. So uh, arguably, you'd say that's uh, three topside bands already coming in. I would say the Lucian band's probably more directed at mission. As if he gets this champion in his hands, he can absolutely just dunk a lot of Minji's champ pool, which is more of the control mage. Also, just hard counters the LeBlanc as well. J team, they'll go ahead throw that last band towards the Zen. We'll see what Berjaya go towards. It will be the Viego. So mm -hmm. it does leave both AD carries up, which uh, the main AD carries are, of course, the Varus and the Phileas, but also the Ziggs here still left available. Interesting that J team go for the Lee Sin, but with how high priority Berjaya put onto this champion, it makes sense that you want to deny it away from Arashi. Yeah, I think it's a good pickup for Hana as well. He's looked very comfortable on it. Second most played champion after that Xin Zhao. And Brajaya Dragon's flashing a lot of picks here. I've seen that Aurelia really making a splash on 11.14. Mm -hmm. Will be the Volibear locked in for Arashi. That's his third time on the champion. Volibear locked in here. If the Lee Sin goes into one of the soul lanes, you can definitely also have the Volibear kind of match up in that regard. But most likely that'll just be the jungle matchup 
Rajaya looking to sift through a couple of support picks and it will just settle down to that thresh. Uh, it does mean that Ziggs Leona is still left available and this is really just J team's bread and butter especially with that Ziggs in that bottom lane although locking in the LeBlanc while LeBlanc's a power pick here it also means that you are running two lanes with heavy magic damage threats incentivizing Berjara to build right. the that magic resistance yeah I think that's a, an interesting move for J team right here they're powerful picks but it does put a lot of the eggs in the AP basket for Berjaya, um, certainly can't pick up this Aphelios here. The Varus is also an option, although I think either or is certainly good. We'll see what they do next with their set of bands. Honestly, both teams kind of picking a lot of comfortable signature champions, uh, as not a lot has been denied, despite, you know, the couple of targets at mission. He's still able to get his hands on the LeBlanc. It will be a Nautilus ban. This tells me that maybe a Leona ban is coming in, too. They want to put Woody on the back foot. I would fully expect that band to come in here just to make sure, just to see what Woody has left to offer. Uh, the Trundle also definitely a band that could come out as well. Trundle support, very powerful with the Ziggs. You just have nowhere to run with that combination. So I would expect Woody to actually go towards that pick, especially when there is a champ like Volibear who's really just a big stat stick. If he jumps in on you, well, that stat stick is uh, a lot smaller after the subjugate goes down on him. That's true. It's not something Woody has gone towards, but it's certainly a possibility for this team. Uh, J-Team had already banned away the Lissandra, try and stop the counter matchup, and now they'll ban a set. And that one's targeted up towards Ozzy. Now, I wonder if Berjaya go for the uh, the counter pick top for Ozzy. That does seem to be the case as the Silas is locked in for Minji. This is a champion we've seen him on once before. It's definitely much more of a signature champion the likes of a, a Jimmy and over on Machi. Definitely going very skirmish heavy coming in from Berjaya. And again, it highlights the fact that they're more of the 131, try and put all of their eggs into Ozzy and Minji and snowball around them. And There's that Trundle. Oh be the trundle it still could go into the jungle here it's a decent matchup into the volo bear because you're able to match aggression with aggression and still subjugate neutralizes a lot of uh trundle's powers and really just comes down to the last pick really to decide where some of these champions are headed yeah if the leeson ends up going on a top side ooh, this would be an interesting switch up i think they're just having a little bit of fun with it though it will be the tom catch that should go top side uh, still a possibility of swapping around, but we have seen this really start to take over as the Kench is unbenched yet again. Yeah, and this actually gives J-Team a lot of options and the fact that uh, if it's some sort of tank matchup, they can match it with the Tom Kench or even put the Trundle topside if they really get a juicy matchup there. But with this Jace hover here, I would expect that they throw... Ooh. Uh, they they can throw both the Lee Sin or the Tom Kench into this matchup and then have the Trundle just gank top lane really, really early on. It prevents, the, it would force the flash out from uh, Jace early as well because the pillar is just so frustrating to play around. Mm. And I would say Hana has been one of the premier Trundle performance um, players here in the PCS, uh, really bringing that to light and performing yeah. well on it. I like this adaptation here. I mean, I think it does mean they're sort of sacking rest a little bit in the top side. And, you know, the Lee Sin, of course, hasn't been taken in the side lane very often since he lost a little damage on that E um, mm -hmm. previously. But I do like this changeup because they're really doing their best to neutralize Arashi. So J Team give themselves a lot of options to flex around and, and kind of choose their weak side in this matchup. It's really, it's a really cool thing. We don't get to see all that often. And, I mean, contrary to what you said, I, I honestly think that they're going to put more into Rust's basket because if you look on the flip side of the map, right, you have a Ziggs and a Tom Kench. Two champions that, while are really annoying, they want to get a couple of levels, they want to get that first item as well to really start rolling. So they're most likely going to try and play a little bit slower in that bot side, play the poke war. If they get land enough poke onto K2 or Enzo, then they'll look for that all in, but should be a relatively slower 
game state down into that bot side and up in that top side you want to just hammer this jace as much as possible if he's put behind this berjaya composition just doesn't get enough steam in that mid game to really threaten the back line with the varus jace poke Okay, so if they can get a lot of pressure up there with a combination of Hana, maybe Mission going on some roams post six, uh, that can put the Jace on the back foot. On the opposite side as well, it does look like the Brajaya Dragon's going for a lot of skirmish, going for a lot of opportunities to get into uh, later stages of the game and try to 1-3-1 one, one their way to victory. We know Brajaya are a team that like, uh, like the chaos, like the craziness. <laughs> J-Team much more controlled. Or at least uh, against stronger opponents, they definitely take their time for the most part. I'm curious to see what they'll make of the Brajaya Dragons. Big difference in the current standings. Uh, but this is the number five and the number six. J-Team kind of the gatekeepers of the top five, looking to keep mm -hmm. it that way. Yeah, and they're really hoping to try and make a push into that top four. You get side selection if you in that first round if you hit the third or fourth spot. So they need a couple wins to actually make a push for those slots. And it starts with making sure you take care of business of some of these lower teams. That also includes Berjaya. Yes, it does. And Berjaya Dragons, certainly in one of the better positions for the bottom half of the table, uh, as they are going to try and put some distance between themselves and some of the other playoff contenders and hopefuls down in that bottom half. As we kick things off, it looks like Mission will not be doing any shenanigans. He does distort the wall, uh, but he's going to just walk away after putting the ward down. Yeah, and I love this play coming in from LeBlanc on blue side. You can just go for a lot of these early invades, get a deep ward in, and the other team usually just doesn't know about it. Unless if they throw down their wards exceptionally early or plant their members to try and spot it out. J-Team, they'll be up to you. get a good vision start here. Also being able to protect the vision in the bot side. So... For Jail, they don't know where Hana is going to path, and it does look like at the moment Hana is hovering topside. So perhaps they look to go aggressive in that bot side a lot earlier than I would have expected. There's a ward in that second brush, though. So if they push too far forward, could be trouble. Right now, K2 and Enzo just sort of matching. But I think with the ping down, they know this is happening, and uh, we will have that start as expected. Oh, Woody and Lilby didn't realize that the ward was down there. We will get things underway. Certainly want to keep an eye on what happens in that top side, but would expect after a couple of levels, without any jungle pressure or any mid lane pressure, you'd think Ozzy would be able to start bullying at rest. And that's also why Arashi is starting top side. I think the biggest concern here is if Hana goes for a level two cheese, um, just going for a very fast gank up in the top side just because Trundle can do that if he goes Q into pillar Makes for a very devastating gank especially when you don't have a lot of escapes on that Jace pick And this is going to be mostly top side focus though coming in from both of these teams uh, The Silas wants to skirmish early the Volibear wants to skirmish early and of course the Jace he wants to skirmish early especially once he gets that first dirk underway Mission already starting off with a little bit of poke onto Minji. And Arashi does look to come in for the level 3 gank. Not going to be the easiest play to do onto a LeBlanc, but he's a little low on mana. Already flashes, follow no through. It. That was a nice play by Minji, and the Sirens are a-wailing here as Mission tries to evade for as long as yes, possible, flash. running deep into the jungle. He does. Let's see if Minji's able to predict the pathing there. And he does go for it. First blood to Minji. Big pick there coming in from Minji, getting that solo kill essentially there. That's going to feel exceptionally good. It, it actually is going to be the solo kill, but now Hana is down here. He has his helper coming in from LeBlanc as well. It's not really to go for a big gank play. It's just the fact that he's respawned and he's looking to get back into lane as fast as possible, but it's going to be a 5v4. Sure want to fight. 5v5. Yes, they do. That's going to be Woody pulled back. All of a sudden, we've got a party in this river as the teleport will finish and Rest gets caught in between the rest of the members and Minji just eats him up. Mission now caught isolated on the side of the team. This time, he's got a lot more mana to work with, though no flash. The sword should be just fine. Berjaya start with two kills against J-Team. 
And this is the skirmish style that Berjaya loved to play in Four Decided J Team. Yes, you can opt into these skirmishes because you do have that power in the top side, but in this bottom side, you want, again, items onto this Tom Kench, levels onto this Ziggs, and right now they don't have those. So Berjaya in this 5v5 at four minutes into the game, they went out. And we talked about how Brajaya Dragons like these chaotic skirmishes. They opted into it, and it was opted into in turn by J-Team. Uh, I, I certainly think Rest wishes he didn't finish that teleport, or wishes he, he could have stopped that teleport, because yeah. it did seem like the position changed very rapidly. But as it stands, two kills on Minji already, and that mid lane matchup all of a sudden starts to tilt. Yeah, even though there is still a CS lead for Minji, they're going to try and make it play bot. Flash play. That's going to be... They do miss the hook onto Woody, but it doesn't really matter. So much damage already being dealt. Arashi will get the final hit. Brashaya Dragons they're just looking diving. good, but this is the counterplay. J-Team on the top side. Teleport coming in as Ozzy tries to clear the wave, goes to the skies, and J-Team back away, respecting the teleport. Great read coming from Ozzy, going into melee form to just burst out that backline minions. Really intelligent play, and it means that the dive isn't able to happen top side. And now, Berjaya, they can take things a little bit slower as they're accumulating that lead in, in really all their lanes. And they can afford to wait just a little bit longer, get that first item, because that first item power spike should come a lot faster here. And that's when they can really step on the pedal around that second dragon. Yeah, that's uh, certainly going to help with the acceleration a little bit. Now, I want to see how well they are able to utilize, utilize this gold lead. Mm -hmm. now, coming into this game, Brajaya Dragons did have a victory. It was a very close spot game against the Hong Kong Attitude, but they were able to win it off of superior team fighting. Uh, and right now in the early game, they've been able to find some good fights in their favors, even taking advantage of uh, possibly some errors by the likes of J-Team. Yeah, J-Team, they really have to tighten things down, wait for Mission to get his power spike or Lil V. But there's just not a oh, moment to breathe. Boy. Yeah, and that's going to be another dead Woody as Brajaya Dragon's emote. gank squad comes a roaming. Yeah, that is honestly, that is the best emote in the game at the moment. I'm just going to come out and say it. Ever since Reckoning, man. <laughs> I, it, it just fits every scenario. Clement mm -hmm. loves the emote. Uh, I love the emotes as well, just because, again, like you can spam it in literally every scenario and it makes sense. It's so useful when you're yeah. trying to choose uh, early on. Now, Lilvi is in under a little bit of pressure here, but I don't know if they're going to go for this full dive now that Woody's he back. I don't zigs. think so. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little hard to kill his eggs, and his flash is up as well. Uh, so Arashi just stays to clear away some farm. He will start off the Ocean Dragon. Yep. Berjaya translating kill lead into objective lead, certainly what you like to see as a Berjaya Dragons fan. Yeah, making sure that they secure this early dragon is pivotal because of the fact that you want to try and get that timer snowballing as fast as possible. I would still say the composition on JT scales incredibly well, but because of the champions around this Ziggs pick, it does make it a little bit more difficult for Lil V to be that hyper carry as the game goes on. And so far, so good for Berjaya in trying to make this upset happen, try and shake up some of the standings, or at the very least, secure their position in playoffs. Yeah, Berjaya can certainly play with a bit of confidence right now. As... Uh... They will start moving around this map. Ozzy actually moving out of lane. Puts the ward down. Pops a blast going early. Make sure that Hana can't get the drop on him. And you know, we've talked about Trundle in the jungle before. It was picked as kind of a counter to Arashi as they flexed it around. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as he's just about to hit level 6, we actually haven't seen him coming in to disrupt any of the lanes. Maybe that changes now that Subjugate comes online. But mm -hmm. honestly, a bit of a surprise. And, and Hana's just kind of been a little non-existent in this game so far yeah he's tried to influence the lanes he's zero 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 but remember he did try and make a play happen in that bot side but now we're going to be looking at a rift herald play this is big potential to just kind of decide the game oh a lot of pressure 
as everybody's involved right now. And Brajaya, the siege got is a strong. second guessing if they want the fighter, the Herald in here, it's gonna get smited down. Didn't see who got that one at the back of it. But either way, the fight is on. Ana bleeding a little bit low, does get the runaway. Oh. And the flash arrow doesn't quite do it. And that Rift Herald does end up getting secured. It's like by the Brajaya Dragons at the end of the day. Brajaya, they end up making out with that Rift Herald, but honestly, it was really just a, a mess of a 5v5 for the side of J team. They didn't need to opt for that fight again. They need to just invest as much time as they can to scale up. They're, they should be okay with just getting lane farm everywhere, but they decide, hey, if Rajaya throws everyone at that Rift Herald, we'll do it as well. So they kind of handshake that one. It ends up being a bit of a stalemate there as far as who truly wins out. Rajaya is going to get narrow victory because like, if you expect them to get two plates, that gives them a 300 gold advantage in that trade. But still pretty relatively even even though it is a 2k gold lead for burjaya uh lil v as long as he is able to still get his farm he's still going to be able to do his damage yeah that's always a threat hard to keep the zigs down for sure but at 10 minutes in the game you know burjaya they still have the objective control very uh touch and go fight there i'm kind of surprised nobody died although k2 tried his darndest mm -hmm. to make sure that somebody did and uh, at the end of the day, Arashi able to hold on and get the outsmite play does mean a win for the Brajaya Dragons as J-Team have three-member Deathbrush set up down bot. Trying to bait this one out, Nightstar. K2 kind of oh, knows something's oh. up, but now Enzo. Good flash play, or flay flash, I should say. Uh, that was the difference between life and death. K2 also helped bailing him out with his own ultimate, but they do escape. And that's really what matters. Brajaya, they protect whatever gold advantage that they do have so far. And I mean, K2 is performing well in this bottom lane at the moment. Getting close to that man immune completion. That's going to be a really nice spike to try and snowball him towards that next dragon. And really all eyes on this mountain dragon in 70 seconds. Comes mission at the top already. Good flash. The flash. Ooh, doesn't land the chains on that. I think for the second time around they get him. That I think might have made the difference there. As mission was a little bit late to the party. Um, as you mentioned, yeah, Mountain Dragon in a minute should shift the focus towards the bottom side. There's the Rift Herald popped, and here is Arachi. Good setup. Satchel charge. Ooh, the hook from Enzo just goes way wide. Yeah, but they do have the charge coming through. That's going to secure two plates. They can poke down and. Uh, that's really all that's going to happen, actually, which is a little bit interesting. So now J-Team, they'll go ahead and get a recall in on that bot lane. Of course, 30 seconds until Dragon. This is the ideal timer that you want to go for if you are looking for recalls. But now, uh, the Woody recalling here is actually dire. Oh, yeah, Lil V. They're going to try to dive the Ziggs. Big Inferno Bomb on top of himself as he flashes. Stunned. Hook doesn't land, but they still get the kill. Not the cleanest of dives, but they do get out without losing a man. And the scream comes in again. Uh, th not the cleanest of dives is definitely a, an understatement. That was definitely a mess, but because of the 3v1 numbers advantage, it doesn't matter how bad th that execution was. When you disable the tower, that's all you need. And that's true. Jaya, you know, they kill the Ziggs. That means there's no threat of a steal coming in from the Mega Inferno Bomb. They're going to be able to secure the second dragon. We'll see what this, uh, more oh, importantly... Oh, oh. Oh, K2. oh, no, K2. Oh, no. Uh, he's, he's fine. Uh, that, was, yeah, yeah. that was that, that, that was a very uh, interesting back Is he too far now, though? The teleport comes through. Minji really wanted to get an execution, but Woody's there to swallow his bottom laner, and he's not oh, going to be able to do charge. it. There we go. Great satchel charge gets him out of that sticky situation there, but J Team, they're gonna allocate the pressure up top side, try and force pressure down onto Ozzy, make him leave the tower, but he is unrelenting. He knows the trundle doesn't necessarily bring a whole lot of damage at this point in the game. 
And of course, the damage has also been lowered onto the Lee Sin. So if he's able to clear the wave, he should be fine. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it... Ozzy, Ozzy just hasn't been held down. I mean, you know, we talked mm -hmm. to the big fan that this was kind of the game plan for J Team is they should be putting pressure up top, but mm -hmm. he's able to keep pace on farm really well, gets his Eclipse on yep. time. And, you know, I, I do feel like this favors Berjaya so much. J Team just haven't been able to find a kill in this, haven't been able to find a ton. The counter pressure top was good. They do knock off a lot of plates before they fall, but, you know, is it enough? That's the question. Yeah, and it is a big issue here moving forward in the game, right? Because your AD threat is just this Lee Sin and the Trundle. Not necessarily high AD threats in comparison to something like an AD mid and a Yasuo or a Yone or an AD bot lane or a traditional AD carry. So when it comes to this mid and late game, you're probably around like 60-70% magic damage with your composition. So once the magic resistance starts coming through, whether uh, it's that wit's end, I don't think a wit's end will be built, but it could come through, or just um, the any other MR item, it becomes a struggle. Yeah. If they even feel they need to worry about it. Now, Ozzy does get double teamed here. He's dead. As Hana and Rest come in. Not much he can do about that. Rashi, uh, backup comes a little bit too late. So, J Team do manage to finally find a kill, and it does go the way of Rest. Uh, let's see if Rashi can defend this turret. I think he can. He will be able to defend the turret, but Ozzy, this time around, goes a little bit too far, goes into Hammer Form a little bit too early, and that spells the end of him. So at long last, J Team are on the board, but all eyes on the next dragon in two minutes, 120 seconds. And for Soul, that's going to help out Berjaya a whole lot because, again, a lot of this composition is going to come down to the poke setup coming in from the Jason, the Varus, and then it comes down to Silas mopping up the team fight. But until the poke comes through, it's going to be hard to just win a straight up team fight. Yeah, they, they have kind of a two-step solution there to try and beat J-Team on this. But, you know, I, I think critical to your point about the composition for J-Team is, is it is just so heavily invested in the magic damage. And mm -hmm. it does make itemizing it against it a little bit easier. So I do worry for J-Team as this game goes later and later. You know, usually this is the team that they do look better as the game goes on as long as the chaos yep. is controlled this is not a crazy high skill game it's very much the opposite of what we saw last time where we just had like double the number of kills than there were minutes uh it, it alpha alpha impunity are very different but yeah j team you know I, I think they're maybe comfortable with the pace but they're not comfortable with the deficit although the gold is even right now yeah surprisingly j team have been able to find the farm and a lot of that goes back onto Mission doing well in lane. He's really never given up his lead when it comes to the farm department. And now that things are even, maybe they can start looking towards this dragon. Magic resistance hasn't come through yet, so this LeBlanc and the Ziggs are going to be doing a lot of work for this next dragon. And it just comes down to, are they able to hold on to their flanks, prevent this uh, Volibear from collapsing or this uh, Silas from collapsing once that poke does come through? And it kind of becomes a bit of a poke war between the two AD champs in the Varus and the Jace, and then the two AP champs coming in from the LeBlanc and the Ziggs. Right oh. Rashi tries to get some ward clears on. Uh, Hana and Rest there to try and stop him. We might have ourselves another little skirmish here, but nope, Berjaya do not want it. And Enzo is there with the lantern. So, Dragon live at the moment. Berjaya mm -hmm. really want this to try and secure Soul Point, but J-Team, you know, I think they're feeling some pressure to try and stop that from happening. Both teams would love to eventually secure up an Infernal Soul, but J-Team in a much quicker position to do it as the teleport even comes in. Yep. Um, All Berjaya four TPs is, up. What I mean to say. Yeah, uh, interesting start. This is Minji not coming in off. There we go. I was wondering when that was going to happen. So now we've got ourselves a little bit of a dragon dance. Yep, six teleports available. 5v5 in this region. Ozzy has a good angle to get Shock Blast. Mission. 
Yeah, that's gonna be Ozzy looking in. They have the hook in, and that's gonna be Rest swallowed up very quickly. Dragon still aggroed, going back on the oh, mission. mission. Can't get the execution off, and that is going to be the smite steal from Hana. Berjaya Dragons oh. do lose two. J yes. Team just coming up with a huge win. Not only do they take the Drake, they take down two members of the Dragons, Arashi Minji, out of this one as the rest of Berjaya cluster and turtle back to their tower. Yet and again, it comes down to that poke war, and this time, J-Team, they have the items back it up, and they're able to find the poke down. We're going to see a replay here, and it's just incredible play coming in from Mission, getting the damage down. Yes, he does get locked down, or they do get locked down by the chains, but Rest bailed out by Woody, and then he goes in and gets an incredible angle along with Mission, and it's really just this two-man combination that's able to mop this fight up. They get Dragon, get two kills, and J-Team, they're back in this game. Uh, Rest even manages to hit him with the thumbs down emote spam. Yeah, uh, so much for Lee Sin losing damage on E at later levels. That didn't really <laughs> look like it was a problem at all. Um, so Rest coming up with some kills for himself, getting some items. I think he just completed the Gore Drinker after the fact. Uh, or I might have had it a little bit before, I wasn't seeing that one. So 20 minutes in, this game is a lot more in J-Team's favor as they secure the dragon, win the fight off the poke war, as you mentioned. And it just means these fights are going to continue to get hairier and hairier, uh, especially for Berjaya Dragons now, Nightstar. Again, because of where this gold lead is, it, it's still 50-50 because of how strong poke is on both sides. But it really comes down to who's able to land their poke. And I mean, for mission right now, he has the Ludens Tempest completed. So it's going to be a little bit easier for him because he's got a lot more point and click mm -hmm. abilities than any of the other poke champs in this game. Yeah, he, mission had a bit of a rough start oh. to this one as, oh, 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 oh. Big bail that's why you take the Tom Kench, baby. Uh, yeah, mission, he had a rough start. He, he, I mean, he goes Oblivion Ooh. Orb first. Oh, as Ozzy, it's taking low. Uh, and yeah, this is uh, this is J Team starting to take control of this. Ng, oh no, I don't think he expected the pressure there. Friends. Doesn't quite get the abduct on, and the bear drop doesn't quite do what Arashi wanted. Teleport invested. They're going all in on this, and let's see if they can actually get a kill as the Jace goes to the sky. Good collapse. Jace down mission. Ana on the run. Teleport double kill now for the Jace, and the counter engage once again coming through Enzo preemptively. Counter collapse. Throws down the box, and uh, rest. I think he found Do that it. Sonic Wave, and he's Do gonna it. follow it into the play. Do they have the damage to take him down? The kick is not enough Almost. to do it. He flashes forward into the spaces he goes, and this is one messy long engage, but both teams will eventually walk it out. And it ends up being Berjaya coming out ahead. They get two for one. They only lose their jungler there, and it was a bit of a miscalculation coming in from Arashi. Not, of course, understanding that once something goes down, he's not really a bruiser or a tank. He's really just a bubble waiting to be popped. And he that's exactly what happens there. But the teleports come in. The numbers advantage comes in as well. The rotation is just a little bit faster to the skirmish. And they are able to finish off the two kills. And while teleport comes in from rest, they aren't able to find enough damage to finish off Minji. So that, they just get to walk away with an overall advantage. Yes, they do. Uh, in most teams, I feel like this is the difference between most teams in the PCS and uh, Brzei Dragons. Most teams, I think, would have maybe not gone for that counterplay <laughs> after Arashi bites it. Not Brzei, though. They will go back in. And speaking of Arashi, he is in some trouble, has to flash the wall. Ozzy providing cover fire, but the Mega Inferno Bomb does the trick as Lil V snipes from downtown. Can't block that one. <laughs> that goes over the Ooh, top. You so, uh, nice little pick off there. Lil V once again showcasing his prowess on this Ziggs. It's just been one of his premier champions and fits into the J, J team identity so well. And again, still no magic resistance built by the side of Berjaya. Whereas on the flip side, you see, uh, while there isn't a lot of armor built up, at least one person is considering it, as Rest does have steel cap boots. Yeah, I think it's a little bit weird that Brzei, you know, they kind of get handed this, like, easy nullifying factor, but don't go for a whole lot of MR. Um, I don't know if that's confidence or something else. Mission. Oh, 
Blade back, but uh, yeah, see, this is why you build MR. <laughs> Look at K2's health bar. Well, maybe not K2, but everybody else should be. Yeah, it, it's not a good look. You can definitely get some MR into your build. Yes, you want the Dirk, but at the very least, he does have teleport for this fight, so he's not going to get super hard punished, but they do need to try and win this dragon fight. Otherwise, things are getting out of their Around control. The Here's Minji around the side. There's already a minefield down. He's actually kind of held at bay right oh, now. This dragon does reset into the pit. And they were looking for the pick. Minji does find Hana on the oh, side, no, but he gets so blown out. up before he can do enough. And that's the kickback. I think Brajaya Dragon spit off a lot more than they could chew. Look at Minji and Mission, I should say, running wild. Meanwhile, in the back line, Rest and Woody cobbling up as Hana takes out Arashi and a double kill to finish yes. off K2. They get the ace for none and the dragon. And wouldn't you know it, Nightstar, they're going straight for the bear. 20 minute hits and J Team come online. It's 24 minutes into the game. They find the fight. Minji goes a little bit too ham there. Has the kick stolen away from the Lee Sin, but that's just not the. Uh, that's not the tool you want. And Brzaia, they don't wait for the poke to land from the Jace, from the Varus, and that spells their end. Minji tries to make a play by himself, but if you ever make an individual play on the Bala Bear or this uh, Silas pick, you're immediately going to get subjugated and you're immediately just going to get deleted. And Woody just constantly saving the life of his bottom lane or any of the squishies on his team. You could see that the idea was to try and take Lil V out of that fight, but he just says, absolutely not. Uh, and at that point, Brajaya didn't really have much of an option to keep the poke war going. They all in, and they get punished for it. Mm -hmm. They definitely do, and now things gonna slowly get taken up a notch because this is exactly where... <laughs> This Ziggs pick thrives is in these siege scenarios where you're able to play split push, where you're able to play around these Baron minions, take, chipping down these towers and then executing the last bit of health with that satchel charge. And for the side of Berjaya, they love their skirmishes, but now you gotta find someone to overextend. And Lil V, you know, he will never overextend here unless if he has teammates around. And he's just able to do so much, just chunking out K2 on his own, frontlining. He's got Woody at his back. He's perfectly fine with this. And J Team are just playing with so much more swagger at the moment. I think this is the bounce back. Obviously, the loss they had yesterday. Oh, I'll talk about that later. Uh, because Mission flashes away from Ozzy. Shock Blast, not going to be enough. Meanwhile, though, J Team just takes the tower down bottom, really making the best of this Baron buff. Yeah, they're, See what they're able to get secure. done. Mm -hmm. yeah. And oh, now they're going to try and catch play back. And so Not. can't really keep going here. K2 just doesn't have enough damage to try and dish. Here comes Arashi around he the side. This force. is the counterplay they're looking for. Yeah, I don't know if this is going to work, though. This is pretty desperate here as they're losing towers top side. Minji goes forward. Yeah, doesn't land anything as Rest dodges him out. They're just dancing outside of the edge of the vision edge of... The abilities and Arashi even gets smited down. Hana gonna be on top of him here, and Minji can't really get much done. That's gonna be K2 to try and chase him away. The 4 1 is just brutal right now with this LeBlanc on the side lane completely unanswered. Oh no, Arashi. Oh no. We've seen that. He can't before. escape. <laughs> this Ziggs is most certainly online and really punishing the, the build path coming in from Berjaya. And now J Team, they're going to be able to siege down these objectives slowly but surely. These structures are going to fall. They're going to try and collapse on this bottom side, but with Woody standing in the way, this poke is going to come through. It's so hard to get past this Tom Kench, and now this could just very well be the end of the game. They're going to try and push for a lot more. I think they'll be able to do it at this point. J Team just got into a rhythm. Very comfortable one for themselves. Last ditch effort by Arashi going in. Look at the kickback on Rest, just deleting the backline. This it's one for one. is an absolute monster. Ozzy comes in on the teleport backline, but he's got no team left and tries to get something. Finally, they'll take down Lil V, but I don't think it's going to be enough. And K2, his back is being stopped indefinitely. <laughs>
Anna flashes him to scream. He knows it's over. Yeah, it's a bit of a horror film for K2. Yeah, this is this is the slasher down. movie right now. This yeah. Is, this is this is like watching Halloween. Like K2 just he tries everything to run away, but no, you can't escape from Michael Myers. Oh boy. Uh this um I don't think and the Nexus the is going to fall here, Nice Star. I, I think I think the game the game is is over. It's just not done. Yeah. <laughs> the Nexus hasn't fallen, but the game's essentially done here. Let, let's be real. It's a 10k goal. I, I will say, okay. Ujaya have done crazy stuff in the past, but they need a miracle fight to win this. Yeah, they need a big miracle fight here. We're going to see the replay. Arashi, he's decided like he's done trying to wait. It's time to try and flip the coin right here, right now. But Rest, he gets a perfect escort into back line. That's quite done. Ozzy, he gets the teleport, yeah. but you know, like by the time he teleports, as you said, during the team fight, where'd everyone go? Yeah, uh, Mission may be the magician, but uh, Rest is the one who made him disappear. Honestly, this Lee Sin has just been beastly. Uh, Rest makes it look so good, you know, despite maybe maybe a little bit over much was made of the nerf uh, to the damage on on E for Lee Sin. I, I, he seems to be just fine as a side lane champion or as a team fighting champion, I should say. Really do like what JTM have been able to do, not just with him, but with this entire composition. Early game, some advantages compounding for Brajaya, but not nearly enough once JTM turned on the heat. Yeah, and it's now just going to be a one last ditch effort coming in from Marashi trying to pull something off here oh, and I don't even know if they get a 5v5 this isn't even yeah. ever an even fight no I don't think so and now it's just to be clean up duty here as the ultimates used defensively try to get away Minji kind of caught between They're everybody stuck in the in wall their he does heal up he's very big but I don't know if he's going to be big enough as he goes into the stasis the Nexus is bare however and J-Team actually taking their time on this one means there's an opening for Ozzy to try and clean up he gets one he gets two but he does not quite get enough and that is going to be Nexus J-Team at 31 minutes will find the victory over Berjaya Dragon solidifying their lead here in the top five J-Team finalizing their gate Keeper position at the very least. They're already secured for playoffs, but <laughs> making sure that those underneath them understand there's a reason why we're in the top half and you're not. As uh, <laughs> on their faces, you can also understand like this is just uh, another day in the office. Yeah, business as usual for J Team. I, 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 I honestly, I, I looked at this game in the early and I thought for Jaya were going to have um, abilities to snowball. Minji picks up those first three kills. I really like what they did around the map. Um, there were some really clean engages. You could say maybe some questionable J team decisions to try and play at the same level, but either way, you know, one one person's throw is another's victory, right? <laughs> but it just wasn't enough to build up. And then J team just took control uh, into, the mid, into the later stages. I think once mission got online, felt like it was over. Honestly, I, I'll leave my words. I mean, Wrestling Sin was great. I, I questioned it. I should not have. Uh, keep the faith and it will be rewarded, apparently. He went absolutely massive. I expect either him or Hana to get the MVP, although uh, Woody outputted enormous amounts of damage. Yeah. Definitely, a, a, or not Woody, uh, Lil V. Uh, Lil V, Lil V, you mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. I got it's, the player that was wrong, but. He, uh, he just kept chucking out the Omega Inferno bombs and like, yeah. Versailles Dragon's never built to MR, I think. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it should have been... to LeBlanc and his Ziggs. Exactly. Like, it, there were definitely ways that you could have tried to mitigate the damage coming into the mid game, but once Ziggs comes online and you don't have those tools against him, he'll just kill you every single time. The range advantage on Ziggs is what makes him such a busted champion in that bot lane right now and it's such a great matchup into a lot of these other ad carries yes the Varus does well in the lane phase but again the arrows don't match the range of mega inferno bot true it's it's certainly not enough and i think we saw um in, in those skirmishes in those fights especially around dragon where it was all about the poke war the Mega Inferno Bomb meant a lot more than the Chains of Corruption, and I think that was mm -hmm. sort of the difference maker, right? There were so many times we saw K2 land the Chains, and then it's like, okay, and, and then what? Because Tom mm -hmm. Kench just swallows up the squishiest champion, and you have to reset. And here's the game 
it definitely flipped after the 15 minute mark. Uh, and yeah, the damage output, uh, not even the most in the game for the Ziggs. It actually got outdone a little bit. Oh wait, no, hold on. I totally read that wrong. Yeah, the Ziggs most damage in the game, not surprised at all. And for the side of Brajaya, it was really just, they struggled to get impact out of this Silas pick, even though he was so far ahead in the lane phase as rest, mm. he's going to get MVP. He just made some really, really impactful plays during the later stages of the game to seal the game for them. Of course, like Lil V, he had a lot of impactful plays leading up to that, but rest was the one to put the nail in the coffin. Yeah, Rust, big playmaker. Landing phase, really quiet, maybe a little bit unexpected. Um, but once the game kind of got rolling and started turning in J-Team's favor, I mean, he was a big part of making that happen. Some really incredible kicks, finding AoE damage, uh, and just really repositioning, forcing uh, Brajaya Dragons into a bad position because they wanted to try and poke it out. They never were able to land enough before he got into their back line and just started deleting yeah, again, all around strong performance come, uh, coming from J-Team. Once they hit that team fight phase, usually that's around that 20-minute mark here. Um, still a little bit, you know, sketchy during the early game, but th that's kind of what yeah, we expect you know, from J-Team. If the early game is a bit scuffed, as long as you can win the mid and late, you're going to be okay. Yeah. So I think J-Team definitely have a lot of chances uh, to keep improving as we look ahead towards the playoffs for them. But we are going to go ahead and take a short break. When we return, Machi takes on Impunity, so don't go anywhere. Thank <laughs> you. 